I've seen this happen with the likes of, um, what's that guy's name, uh, Paul Washer, right? You can have people that are saved, and all of a sudden they start hearing this guy, and he's preaching, and it's like, man, I don't hear that. You know, you'd be going to maybe a, a more of a watered-down type of church. You're not getting fed. You're not hearing a lot of preaching, and it's like, oh, man, this guy's really, really ripping on sin or whatever. You're starting to hear this stuff. And I, people in here, I think, have had testimony of, of at one point listening to his preaching because you're thinking like, man, yeah, I, like, I like the way he's doing this. And you start, you know, this guy comes along and it's like, well, hold on a minute though. Don't get too carried away with him because that guy's teaching damnable heresy. That guy's teaching a works-based salvation. You have to turn from all of your sins. And if you sin, you know, like all this other nonsense is lordship salvation garbage. Remember where you came from. And this is where he says here, be followers of me. He's kind of settling this matter, trying to get the, the church unified. Verse 17, For this cause have I sent unto you Timotheus, who is my beloved son, and faithful in the Lord. Again, he's calling him, his, now, that's not his physical son. He's not, Apostle Paul wasn't married and didn't have children out of wedlock. The Timotheus is someone he won to, the Christ, won to Christ. He won to the Lord. That's why he's calling him his beloved son. And faithful in the Lord, who shall bring you into remembrance of my ways, which be in Christ. So every time we see the Apostle Paul telling people to follow him, he's saying, follow me as I follow Christ. And he's going to bring you, the, you know, he's going to bring you back into remembrance. Remember, because the Apostle Paul was there with this church, getting the people saved, excuse me, before he went on somewhere else. So now he's writing this letter, because he's not with them. That's why he's writing to them, right? He's sending him this letter, saying, you know what? I'm going to send Timothy, because he's faithful, I know you can trust him, he's a, a, one, a fruit of my labor, right? I've begotten him through the gospel, and he's going to bring the ways that I already taught you once to bring you back in remembrance. Remember when Paul was here? This is, this is the way you're supposed to be doing things. And he's going to go help bring order back to this church, who shall bring you in remembrance of my ways which be in Christ. Not all of his ways, if there's any ways that aren't in Christ, but he's like, you know what, the ones that that are right in Christ, as I teach everywhere in every church. And verse 18 speaks to what I had mentioned earlier. Now, some are puffed up as though I would not come to you. So these are the people, oh, that Paul, he's not coming back. He's not going to do anything. He's a blowhard or whatever, right? They're, they're just kind of spouting off. Verse 19, but I will come to you shortly, if the Lord will, and will know not the speech of them which are puffed up, but the power. For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. What will ye? Shall I come unto you with a rod or in love and in the spirit of meekness? So he's, you know, he's basically saying, I'm coming. It's up to you to decide. Am I going to come here and just correct like with the rod and just, and just have to lay down law and get you right? Or are you just going to go ahead and fix the things that are, that are screwed up right now and then I could just come and love and we can just enjoy a good time of of fellowship together.